Hi YouTube, this video is just going to be a very basic introduction into microscopy. So if you have a look here, these are my main two microscopes. Um, the one in the front is a Meiji Techno stereo microscope, so that's more used for looking at large objects like uh, coins and stamps and that kind of thing. Um, the one behind is a compound microscope um, for looking at microscopic organisms and things like that on slides. Um, both of these microscopes are trinocular, which means that they've got like a third eyepiece. Um, and you can see on the front one here, there's a camera attached to the top of it. And that goes down into my laptop so I can view things on my screen. I'll talk you through my other microscopes quickly. This is a really, really basic um, stereo microscope. Here's another stereo microscope, um, another small one, but this one's got a ring light on it, which is quite useful. This one is called a long arm stereo microscope. And what's useful about this is you can put like a big object, like a rock or something on the floor, and then you can swing the arm around and view it. This is a small Meiji Techno microscope. Um, Meiji Techno are really good. They're sort of um, as good as like Olympus and Leica and that sort of thing. High-end microscopes. This one I picked up at a car boot sale for, a, I think I paid 10 pounds for it. Um, all of the microscopes you've seen so far I've picked up like that at car boot sales. Right, this is my main Meiji Techno microscope. Um, this one, if you were to buy it new, I think it's like between 2000 and £2,500, so it's a lot of money. This one I got on eBay, and it was listed as being unable to focus. And I thought, I'm going to risk it, because I, I've bought another microscope in the past that I was able to kind of clean all the lenses inside and, and make it focus. So I assumed that this had something similar wrong with it um, and I paid £300 for it so I was all prepared to clean all the lenses and everything when it came and when I unboxed it um, I noticed that the the bit at the back where it slides up and down um, just wasn't set right uh, and it was just literally that I just had to kind of undo a screw lift it up reset it and it focused perfectly so the the guy who had it before obviously just didn't know what he was doing so i got a complete bargain with this it was like brand new apart from that so absolutely brilliant bargain and again this is a stereo microscope trinocular um so for looking at bigger objects like you know fossils and coins and that kind of thing bits of archaeology and this is my compound microscope so this is the one all the images that you're going to see i'm going to show you in this clip are done under a compound microscope. I'll probably do some stereo microscope um, videos as well, but um, this one is for looking at things like slides, microorganisms and things like that. And this is just a quick close-up of the camera that I use, 10 megapixels. Okay, all of the um, aquatic organisms that you're about to see have all come from my pond. Um, you're better off like scraping from uh, areas that look a little bit dirty, like where there's a lot of uh, weed and algae build up, um, or just kind of edges and things like where where there's muck at the bottom of the pond. But every kind of teaspoon of water that you get out of your pond can have like hundreds or thousands of little microorganisms in it. It's absolutely teeming with life. Okay, I'm going to start with the various algae. Um, so this is Volvox globe algae. You can see these brilliant little balls, really detailed. Um, and you can see the chlorophyll in the middle, like in little balls. Okay, and this is Cyanura, um, three colonies here. Um, these, they have like little sort of polyp looking things. And these can form little balls as well. These are kind of slightly broken up colonies. Okay, the main one in this image is Spirogyra, uh, also called water silk. Um, and it is just a, a filamentous algae. And it always reminds me a little bit of like DNA kind of strands and um, with a sort of helix kind of shape in the middle. And the small ball that you can see there is called Chlamydomonas. Okay, this is Clostarium. Um, there are quite a few species of this, but they all have this slight kind of crescent shape to them. Um, I'll show you a couple of different types. Uh, this is a different species. Uh, and here's another species. And this is probably my best image of Clostarium. Um, you can also see a Cosmarium algae there as well. And there are so many different types of algae. Um, and basically a good rule of thumb is when you're looking under a microscope at kind of pond life, 
Um, most things that are green are probably going to be algae. Okay, moving on to diatoms. These are really, really tiny little things. And, you know, they look like they're made of glass because I think they are silica. And you'll usually see these as... Um, having a sort of brownish tinge to them. Um, you might have heard of diatoms before, like in relation to kind of marine life. You get lots of different ones in the sea, uh, but there are loads in pond life as well. So this image shows uh, three different species. And here's one that I've isolated. So most of the ones that you see, I suppose, could be described as kind of grain of rice shaped. That's what they look like. And they kind of move around as well with a kind of a steady forward motion. Okay, this is called a gastroric or hairy belly. Um, that's great, isn't it? Like hairy belly, nice name. And if you look at the front of it, you can see a little mouth, say at the top there. Uh, and then they have these sort of two tails at the bottom. And these things, they move around fairly fast. So it's quite hard to kind of keep track of them and try and get a photo under the microscope. Okay, this is called a rotifer. Um, I thought this was a paramecium at first because it's a similar kind of shape. But I think you can see uh, mouth parts at the front. Uh, this one is a paramecium, uh, and again, there's another cosmarium algae there, um, which is quite a nice view of a cosmarium. Uh, this is chilomonas. I quite often get these confused with diatoms under the microscope, um, but you have to look very carefully, and then you see these two flagella at the front that kind of uh, whip around. Okay, these are lacrimaria. Um, these are very distinctive in that they have like a very pointed head uh, and then this very long kind of uh, whippy tail. Okay, these are ostracods. Um, these are much bigger when you're looking down a microscope um, and much darker. So they're really, if you've got some, you'll, you'll see them basically in your sample. Um, and yeah, because these are bivalves, they've got the, the two separate um, shell half to them so if you look at where it says dorsal view there you can see that that's very kind of shell like like a little sort of clam and you can see the um, very distinctive dark black eyes on these uh, and here are a couple of views of another one this one and then there's this close-up version of it as well okay this is bosmina this is very distinctive because it's got this kind of pointy beak that hooks over the front of it Again, the eyes are very easy to spot on this. Uh, this was very bosmina shaped. Uh, and so what it looks like is like the cast skin, basically, of a bosmina. OK, this is a Daphne, also called a water flea. Um, and if you ever see any of these in action, you'll know why they're called water fleas, because they kind of look like they're sort of jumping in the water. They sort of have this little jerky motion. Um, and these these are visible with the naked eye. Um, this is not a great photo in that you can't see the antennae and things at the front, but it's quite nice that you can see uh, eggs inside the body. Uh, the eye is also very clear and so is the gut. You can see the, the dark stripe down the middle. Okay, quite a lot of copepods, when they're young, they have this uh, nauplius stage, um, which is just basically like a larval stage. Um, and what you're seeing here is very typical uh, of what that stage looks like in most copepods. Um, and here is a, a very typical copepod cyclops. So those nauplius that we saw a minute ago, those could be actually from uh, cyclops. Uh, cyclops are actually, they're about, you know, similar sort of size to uh, Daphnia. So adult ones are, you know, visible with the naked eye. And here's another side view of one. Okay, this is a hydra, um, named after the sort of many-headed creature from Greek mythology. Um, so if you have a look at this, I suppose it looks a little bit like a, a sort of sea anemone um, with sort of what looks like tentacles at the front of it. And it does use these for kind of grabbing smaller creatures and pulling them in. Um, so hydras have uh, asexual reproduction. So if you look at this image, you can see the, the main big hydra um, has got a small bud uh, at the side of it and that little bud uh, just grows off of the main one and then eventually just pops off like the one you can see uh, at the bottom there and becomes a separate uh, hydra all on its own and, and grows independently. And what I love about these is because they're transparent when they eat something you can see it really clearly inside them and um, so this one has just ingested a cyclops. Okay, there are a few microorganisms that you can find that have this kind of long stalk um, or a sort of tube-like. This one is Vorticella. 
um, and you can just about make out the stalk there. And these, they're very, very tiny. Um, and you tend to find them in quite large groups, actually. I've taken a video of this, uh, and you can see that on a you know separate YouTube video. Um, but what they basically do is they they kind of ping. So they'll be there one second and, you know, attached with their stalk, and then suddenly they go ping and they disappear completely. Um, so I was quite lucky enough to see all this big group of them together. Uh, and then they just ping off individually and more of them kept coming up from the bottom because this is on the edge of a, um, like a bit of pond weed. Okay, this is similar to Vorticella, but it's um, Stentor. And you can't really confuse them because it's much, much larger. Um, and this thing, again, it's like tube-like uh, with a sort of a mouth at the top. And it sort of siphons in microorganisms into it and uh, ingests them. Um, here's a close-up of uh, Stentor, and I've labelled uh, all the main kind of features. Okay, moving on to planarians. Um, these are sometimes called flatworms or flukes. Um, they're basically obviously very flat and when they move they kind of glide across the surface and they don't uh, wriggle around like a true worm would do. You can very clearly see the couple of small eyes on the top um, and when you're looking at them under a microscope they have this kind of cute look to them I always think. Um, this is just a close-up of a head of one of them just showing the eyes. And here's a typical oligochate worm um, which is just a fancy way of saying a true worm. Uh, you can see the, the segments on this very clearly um, with sort of bristles at the edges um, which it uses to push itself along. So think of um, our true earthworms. Um, this is very closely related, but this is a, a sort of a typical aquatic one. Um, again, you can see the eyes at the front here and you can very clearly make out um, the guts or intestine running uh, all the way down the length of the body. And these shouldn't be confused with nematode worms, which are something different again. Okay, this is a midgy larva. Um, so this obviously will turn into um, your kind of typical midgy that bites you on a summer evening. And this is another type of midgy larva. Um, quite a lot of midgy larvae that you find are red looking like this. Um, and they're quite often just called blood worms as well. Uh, sometimes you can buy these in pet shops in large numbers to um, feed to fish and that sort of thing. Okay, this is a fish louse. Um, many years ago, I was lucky enough to go to Sweden with a couple of experts to uh, collect pool frogs because basically we used to have pool frogs in this country, but they went extinct years ago. And they found lots of fossil bones of pool frogs, so they knew that they used to live in this country and they wanted to reintroduce them into Norfolk. Um, so we collected all these pool frogs, um, but we also collected pool frog tadpoles from Sweden. And a lot of the tadpoles actually had these fish lice attached to them. Uh, and the fish lice, because they're not native to the UK, um, we didn't want to introduce fish lice as well. Um, so I had to painstakingly, under a microscope, pick off all these fish lice from all these tadpoles before we could bring them back into the country. <laughs> So these are basically parasites and they've got these two kind of suckers at the front where they stick onto like a fish or a tadpole or something similar. Um, you can find many of these species in the sea as well, uh, like marine versions of this one. Okay, this is an amphipod or a freshwater shrimp. Um, probably a lot of you have seen one of these before. These are much bigger and you know, visible with the naked eye. And this is just a close-up view of a head of one. Okay, this is a mayfly nymph. Um, it looks similar, I suppose, to a damselfly nymph, uh, but it's a, a subtly different shape and it's got three really long tails. Okay, this is a caddisfly larva. Um, now these things, they go around and they collect little tiny stones or sand uh, or bits of twig and they make like a tube uh, which they live in. So quite often, you just see them as the tube with them hiding inside and then maybe occasionally you see a little head popping out. This is one where the, the tube uh, is come out of its tube and you can see all the little um, filaments and things at the side. Okay, this is Drosophila, the fruit fly. Um, I did quite a lot of work with these at A-level, just breeding them, culturing them, um, curly wing versions and vestigial wing versions and just cross-breeding them, basically. There are lots of different versions. So this is um, Drosophila melanogaster. There's another one called um, Drosophila hydei, which is a lot 
larger um, and I culture these at home as well because I feed them to things like poison dart frogs and that sort of thing. Uh, here's just a close-up of the head of one of them uh, which I've labelled just to show all the main features. Okay this thing's called a pseudo scorpion. Um, it looks like a very tiny scorpion without a tail um, but you can find these like in leaf litter like if you go out and you collected like a, a little bag of leaf litter if you got home um, you'll probably find one of these in there somewhere they're fairly common um, but really overlooked a lot of people don't even know they exist this is a sort of typical terrestrial mite and this is a close-up of the head of the mite um, with the mouth parts all labeled this is a sheep tick um, sheep ticks don't carry Lyme disease and um, Lyme disease is carried by deer tick um, and if you look at the body of this sheep tick you see it's rounded and it's also a very light sort of creamy color um, so with a deer tick they're a much different shape much kind of um, more elongated uh, and they're a lot darker they're more of a sort of a dark brownish sort of color so if you ever find that you've got bitten by a tick and you're sort of panicking about Lyme disease um, just check out the um, type of tick first because more often than not it's actually a sheep tick uh, which can't carry Lyme disease anyway. I actually found a big swollen adult tick and uh, I kept it for a while because I'm strange like that and she laid eggs like loads of eggs and I just kept it in like quite a sealed tub for a long time and the eggs all hatched and these little tiny babies they lived for like almost a year <laughs> without feeding in this little tub um, horrible little things. I guess they have to be able to survive for a long time in the wild because they climb up onto grass stems and they just wait basically for something to come along that they can feed on. Okay this is a close-up of some tick mouth parts. Um, you can see the hypostome in the middle there and you can see that that's barbed so that would be quite hard to take out of your skin anyway. Um, but what makes it even harder is, can you see the chelicera there? Um, actually there are two chelicerae forming a v-shape and it puts those together and pierces you and then they open out into that v-shape and they've got the little barbs on the ends of them so that makes it even harder to remove here's a couple more images this one just focuses mainly on the hypostome and this one focuses more on the chelicerae okay this is a cat flea um, there's a couple of photos of this um, and then this one I've done a close-up of the head as well again I've labeled all the main features of this for you okay this is a tarantula urticating hair so tarantulas on their abdomens they have lots of these little hairs and if you annoy them in any way they kick them at you they sort of like kind of flick them uh, into the air and if they get on you you can see they've got all these little barbs on them and they basically they make your skin really itch because they get stuck in your skin and if you're an animal and you're unlucky enough to kind of breathe them in or get them in your eyes um, it would be really uncomfortable okay this is just a close-up of the middle part of a um, daddy long leg spider okay I hope you've enjoyed this video um, I'd just like to thank my parents for buying me like a little nature bag when I was very very young which had like uh, magnifying glasses and you know insect books and all kinds of things in it um, and my first kind of little pocket microscope um, I'd also like to thank um, John Buckley who taught me at GCSE level um, and introduced me again to um, more powerful microscopes uh, and then I'd also like to thank uh, Alex Falconer who taught me at A level um, again like we did a lot of microscope work at A level and this really gave me a kind of love for it um, and both of those two teachers also taught Chris Packham so they really know their stuff and everything that I know is thanks to them where it comes to this kind of stuff I would say and if I have made any mistakes in this video um, it's not to do with them that's just me um, because they really know <laughs> what they're talking about okay this video has just been um, stills and things that I've taken down the microscope if you want to see some videos that I've taken with some of these kind of uh, aquatic creatures in action check out another video that I'm going to put on and I also plan to post more microscope videos in the future so please hit subscribe to see uh, anything that I post as soon as I post it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.